Perdomo Fresco. Maduro wrapper. They have several versions of this with different wrappers. and um, They're a very affordable stick. At my local shop, they're a little over $5. Um, my shop is a little on the high side. But, um, so this would probably be four, four and a half, five bucks, almost anywhere. Uh, maybe less if you get them in bulk. Obviously, I'm paying per stick. Um, but I want to talk about my relationship with Perdomo um, as a cigar smoker. Um, my very first cigar I ever tried, ever, um, was in a very good shop out in Arizona. I was on a training uh, event for about a week with a company I was working for at the time, and they shipped us out there. And um, I was introduced to cigars by a gentleman out there um, who I met while I was in training. Uh, we kind of became friends. And uh, he said, hey, man, I'm going to go to the shop and uh, have a cigar or two and maybe have some Chinese food. And I was like, I'm down. Let's go. Um, I don't know what possessed me to do it. I'm a lifelong anti-smoker, um, particularly when it comes to cigarettes. But... Uh, I don't know, something about it just sounded kind of cool, and I had learned that you don't inhale cigars uh, for the first time only a little bit before that, so I was like, well, I don't know, I'll, I'll give it a shot, you know, see if I actually like it or not. Um, and my first cigar ever was a Perdomo uh, 10th anniversary champagne. Uh, and I smoked pretty much the whole thing, and uh, real slow. And I think I had to relight it once. That's how slow I smoked it. And I thought it was pretty good um, at the time. And then I had another cigar. I think it was a different Perdomo. I don't remember what it was. Um, didn't care for it as much. Um, but between the two, I got enough of an inkling like, this might be something I could explore. So I come back home to Atlanta. And um, I uh, head right out to my shop my local shop, found out where it was, and I had no idea, I just Googled it, and met some very fine people there, and started trying other cigars, and ultimately, I gravitated towards a more stout, complex, flavorful, stronger cigar, um, oftentimes Maduro wrapped, or some sort of Obscura, or Sumatra, or something like that. <clears throat> Um, and I started learning a lot about cigars, where the flavor comes from and whatnot. Um, I found some very good um, uh, Connecticut wrap cigars that were also complex in flavor. So I, I learned that it's not all about the wrapper. It's just an indicator, right? But I tend to gravitate towards heavier, more complex cigars. Um, I like the Hiram and Solomon uh, Master Mason a lot. Um, I like the Alec Bradley uh, Magic Toast a lot. Um, there's a, a handful of others. I even like a lot of house sticks. Uh, little $5 cheapies. You know, just if they're well made, they're well made. So, uh, and it's trial and error, and that's part of the fun of smoking cigars. But throughout the whole journey, I, uh, I went back to Perdo Perdomo because it was the first one I smoked, right? And... I've tried to like Perdomo Cigars as a brand. They're uh, obviously a, a major player in the field. Um, <clears throat> and uh, they make a lot of sticks, you know. But uh, I found, and even when I went back to the Champagne for the second time, I actually didn't care for it. After I discovered what I really liked, the Champagne was kind of, huh. I guess, you know, um, but it's not a go-to at all, even with a cup of coffee, you know, lighter smoke, whatever, and, uh, and I've told this story to countless uh, tobacconists that I've run into, and they say, yeah, it's, that's kind of a go-to for a lot of people when they're introducing a newbie like I was at the time uh, to the world of cigars is, is that champagne 10th anniversary, and it's not a bad cigar. It's just not my flavor palette, you know? And um, it is for a lot of people. It's just not for me. And so I've been 
every every 10 to 15 cigars, you know, I'm, I'm always trying something new. I go back to favorites most of the time, probably one out of two cigars that I smoke is one of my favorites. The other one out of two is something I've never tried before. And uh, so of that, I've tried to go back at one out of every 15 or 10 or 15 cigars to a Perdomo. And uh, I just have a hard time finding a Perdomo that I like. Um, and so I felt like I needed to make this video because the Perdomo Fresco, this guy here, is a very enjoyable cigar. Um, on first light, it was a bit harsh. I think I over toasted it a little bit uh, before I actually lit it. And it, may, it, it had a pretty uh, sour note to it, uh, real caustic, almost chemical. But not from chemicals in it. Obviously, it's a you know natural, high quality cigar. But um, it was really not pleasant that first puff. <laughs> but I gave it a shot. I kept going, um, and I mean, three or four puffs in, it's like okay, okay, yeah, this is a good cigar. Um, hmm. And with it being such a value at five bucks, dude, that's a great cigar. Um, I haven't even gotten through the first third yet. So I think I'm going to put the phone down and I'm recording this on an iPhone. So forgive me. I keep looking off to the corner. I know I'm the cam the camera lens is over here somewhere and I know I'm not looking at the right spot. So it might weird you out. But uh, anyway, I'll check back with you in a minute. Well, I'm a third in, maybe a little more. And uh, this held steady. Definitely a chocolatey kind of a note to it definitely leather uh, a little on the dry side I like that definitely gives you that little that little tacky feeling on top of your tongue good smoke um, it's not too thick not too thin You know, some cigars, the smoke clings. Like, you blow it out, and it stays around your head. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But this one doesn't do that. If it weren't so windy, I could probably blow some decent smoke rings with this thing. Almost, not quite. More like a smoke pillow. <laughs> Perdomo Fresca. You know, it has almost a menthol kind of flavor to it, but not really. But it has kind of a effervescent kind of aftertaste to it in the finish. It's really unusual, I think. The ash is not great. It's kind of crumbly. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I haven't been able to get more than a maybe three-quarter inch out of it before it's ready to break and I have to ash it. Um, definitely a whitish gray with some split right there. first third it had a really nice sharp razor sharp line it's getting a little more unruly here of having to touch it up a little bit but not bad the wrapper stayed beautiful 
No cracking, no breaking, no flaking. I'm a punch guy. Stayed in good shape. I'm now fully halfway through the stick. It was a Robusto size, a little more than halfway through it, I think. But in any event, so far it's been remarkably consistent. Like all cigars, it gets a little stronger at the end, you know, as, as you go along. From the buildup of uh, ammonia that happens as part of the natural process of burning tobacco. Um, but I minimize that, and I'm, you should know this if you don't already, you'll maybe learn something here, but I make a practice out of every five or six puffs or whatever, I purge a little bit, which is to say you blow through the cigar uh, just a little bit, and that helps to release some of that ammonia and it lowers the impact of that process. That's what it looks like. And then I took a drag. So it's uh, really, it's still a little on the tacky side, a little on the, uh, you know, a little, little bit of a strong finish. For those of you that don't know the finish, it's that, that feeling you get in your mouth, that coating uh, that a cigar gives you. And every cigar is different. Some of them, the finish lasts for days. You literally wake up and taste it in your mouth the next day. By the time a cigar has marinated in your mouth for a day, it ain't pretty. It don't taste good. Um, a good cigar, the finish might last half an hour, an hour, maybe two after the smoke, if that. Um, and it's pleasant the whole time, especially when you're smoking. Um, this cigar, the finish is a little on the strong side. For some people, that might be a little bit off-putting. Um, it's borderline for me as to whether or not it's too much of a finish. The smoke itself, your initial puff, you know, tastes great. But that finish, that lingering taste, it's just a little bit acidic, a little bit woody, a little bit dry. Um, it's not terribly peppery. Pepper is a, a term often used to describe a, a really strong cigar, a strong finish on a cigar. Some cigars are referred to as pepper bombs. Uh, this is definitely not a pepper bomb. It's got some pepper to it. But it's subtle. And it's more all over the mouth. It's really in the finish. It's really well balanced. It doesn't nail you in the back of the throat like a bad day in prison. It's more like a good day in freedom. Full of bad jokes. Sorry. Deal with it. Perdomo Fresca. We're going to be in the last third of it here shortly. For me, that's where a lot of cigars live and die. I've had cigars that were pleasant, decent, to really good. All the way through the first two thirds. Get to the last third. Something happens. Some magic voodoo comes down from who knows where and strikes that cigar and makes it taste like straight charcoal in your mouth. So we'll see. We'll see where it goes. My inclination is that this is going to stay relatively consistent, maybe just get a little stronger. I may put it down with an inch left or so and let it die with dignity, but it's been a good smoke the whole way through. For a $5 smoke, I mean, honestly, it's really hard to go wrong.
at the end here you can see that the uh cap sort of came apart could have been mostly due to how i was smoking it i was hot boxing at the end there really puffing on it trying to keep it lit So I think that I would give this smoke somewhere around a 7.5, 7.7 on the scale of 1 to 10. It's a very flavorful smoke that's good from the light up uh, all the way through to the very end. It never became too peppery. It's very consistent. Um, the finish is almost gone a half hour after I'm done. Construction was excellent. Uh, it was a very enjoyable experience. I think you ought to pick a few up. So thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next review.